All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna be talking about how to install SyncThing on a Raspberry Pi. All right, so first off, what is SyncThing? SyncThing is essentially a file synchronization service that is totally free and it's an open source project that essentially allows you to share files across a bunch of different computers and a bunch of different setups, all with a peer-to-peer -peer method rather than a client-to-server method as you would normally find. It essentially allows you to share files with your friends or anything and essentially just mirror folders across everybody's computers. It's really helpful, especially in instances where you have multiple computers and you have a few files you'd like to always be synced across the two. Or if you've got a bunch of different computers and would like to be able to share files with your friends and have all this synced up together. It's an interesting way that it works with a network topology, but overall for the end user, it just kind of works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up on a Raspberry Pi, and so that way it can not only act almost like a backup service, it's not fully a backup service, but it's a second place for this data, and we can also edit the files directly on it. So that way you can easily always have sync thing up and running and be able to manage your files on your Raspberry Pi in case you need them. It acts somewhat like a NAS, but realistically with sync thing, you don't really need that too much. Though it could be good if you wanted to replicate these files across multiple computers, and that way you always have this Raspberry Pi as a backup. So as I said earlier, SyncThing works peer-to-peer -peer rather than client-to-server. So when you set up folders, it's not like one computer really owns the folder. It's really that all the computers own the folder equally whenever they're on there. And so since nobody really owns the folder, if it gets deleted, it can just get reshared and nothing changes. And changes get propagated throughout the entire SyncThing network. Another thing that it does have, and it's something that we can choose whether or not to turn on, is basically global discovery and NAT transversal. So what this does is it allows you to, even if you have a strong firewall, it'll still be able to allow syncing across all of it, and you don't have to mess with static IP addresses or anything like that. It's honestly a very secure authorization, but for this, we're going to leave this disabled just because we want it to be more secure. And so for this setup, only local changes will be propagated and nobody will be able to access it outside the network. And so realistically, because of SyncThing's ultra high focus on security, it's a really good project and I would not worry too much about opening this up. The entire protocol is written to be very secure. It's got TLS auth and it's also set up so that you have to invite somebody and they have to agree to be invited to join this group. That way there's an extra layer of security that really makes sure that there's a very low chance that anyone is able to break into your SyncThing network. Though if you're sharing really critical stuff, I might hold off on opening this up to the whole network because quite frankly, the internet is always open and it's kind of scary to have things opened up like that. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and install this on a Raspberry Pi 4 and we'll be connecting to it on my Mac. All right, and so as you can see, I've already gone ahead and SSH into my Raspberry Pi. And so all we're gonna do is run a sudo apt update to update our package links. This way our Raspberry Pi will be able to figure out where sync thing is. And now we're gonna go ahead and run a sudo apt install sync thing. And it's just gonna go ahead and install it for us. That's the beauty of the apt package system. It just works really easily. All right, so now SyncThing has been installed. So what we're first gonna to wanna to do is run it for the very first time via command line. So we're just gonna say SyncThing. And it's gonna start by running it. The first time it's gonna go ahead and set a bunch of stuff up. And that way we won't have to do it later on. All right, and so as we can see here, there's a bunch of logs going on and we can see that universal plug and play has failed. That's because I've blocked universal plug and play on my router for security reasons. It's not that insecure, but it's good practice, especially with me doing a lot of random configurations all the time. I like to have peace of mind of having very strong router because I do tend to have kind of unsafe configurations, especially as I'm doing these tutorials. And so it's just something I do. And so as we can see here, even though I've got universal plug and play disabled, it's actually joined this relay service, which in some ways is kind of scary, but we're gonna go ahead and show how to disable that if you choose to. This relay service essentially allows you to, without port forwarding, share between all these different computers by essentially going between a middleman. Your data is technically on there for a little while, though it is encrypted. But if you want the highest security, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and disable this. All right, and so now that we've gotten to this step right here, joined relay, 
That means that we're at a place where SyncThing is up and running, and that means it's gone through and done the initial configurations and set up its initial files. And that's all we needed it to do. And so now we're gonna do Control C to kill it. And so now we're gonna go ahead and just do an LS. All right, and so if we do an LS-A in our Raspberry Pi's root folder, I originally thought it was in the sync folder, whoops. We can see right here, there's this config directory. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're actually gonna to wanna to modify that directory to allow access to the web server, basically the configuration folder for sync thing on our network. And so the reason we wanna do this is I'm currently running this in a headless setup. So I'd like to be able to log into this from my computer and be able to access the web GUI via a web browser. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do sudo nano dot config and we're gonna see that there's files behind here. And so it's sync thing and then it's config.xml. And now we're gonna go in and we're gonna see that this is the config file for sync thing. And so it's got a bunch of different things here that you can go into, but all we're gonna care about for this is to be able to set it up from the GUI. So if we say that the GUI is enabled, that's good. But if we look at this address, it is 127.0.0.1 which is a local subnet that is only accessible via local applications. So if I was to open up my Raspberry Pi's web browser right now, I would be able to get to this, but since I don't have a screen hooked up to it, I'm not gonna be able to get to it. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to change this to allow everything to access it. So we're gonna say 0.0.0.0, .0 is the address. And so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got firewall rules that keep 8384, that port, locked from your router, but your router should not be forwarding this port anyway. And so now that we've done that, we can just go hit Control X to exit, Y to save it, enter to write it. And now we're gonna go ahead and run sync thing again. And this time we're actually gonna be able to access it from our web browser. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to go into web browser and type in raspberry pi dot local. And we're gonna type in port 8384. And as we can see right here, we've successfully connected to SyncThing's web GUI from our Raspberry Pi. And so if we look right here, allow anonymous data usage reporting, I personally just don't allow this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna say no, but that's up to you. And so now the first thing we're gonna do, it says danger. Currently anybody can access this on the local network of course, because that port is blocked but we need to go ahead and set up a GUI authentication user and password. And so all we have to do is click setting and go into GUI and say a user and a password. You don't need to use HTTPS as long as you have port 8384 blocked on your router. I'd say you probably want to only be able to access your sync things GUI from your local network. And so the one thing we need to do now before we change anything else is we gotta change this GUI theme from light mode. Obviously we have to go dark mode. That's just critical for any appliance you've got. And we're just gonna go ahead and click save. All right, and so just like that, we're now more secure. So the next step is to actually start up syncing. And so to do this, as I said earlier, it's peer to peer rather than client to server. And so that means we're going to need another peer. And so I'm gonna do this on my Mac. And so I've already installed sync thing on it right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on it and click open. And it automatically worked because I'm on my local Mac. I did not have to open up the ports to anyone else for the web GUI. And so all we have to do here is click add remote device. And it's very easy to set up. It's going to say, hey, what's the device ID? And you get to choose one of these devices. But what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Raspberry Pi and say actions show ID. And so we're going to choose this ID right here. That way we know exactly what we're connecting to it and we'll just call it Pi. And under sharing, we're gonna say, and we're going to enable introducer, which means it can share folders with us. And so we're just gonna go ahead and click save. All right, and so now we need to wait a couple of minutes, but when we go back into our Raspberry Pi, we'll see that device wills desktop local wants to connect. And so we're gonna say, yes, add device. And we'll call it desktop. And so that's the way sharing works on sync thing. Both clients have to agree, and now they're available. And so now, let's go ahead and start securing this down a little bit more before we do anything. So to do that, we're going to go into Actions, Settings, 
And then under connections, we're going to disable NAT transversal, global discovery, and that way we're only going to have local people being able to connect to it. And now we're going to need to restart the same thing to get this set up again. And just like that, it's pretty quick to restart actually. And so now it should be set up. We'll do the same thing on my Mac really quickly for additional security as well. All right, and so now let's go ahead and start sharing folders. So we're going to first just create a new folder. And this is the folder path. You could also have this on a mounted hard drive, but I'm not gonna have that set up here. So now let's go into sharing. And we're going to share it with desktop. And file versioning, it has some basic file versioning. It's not as good as anything that Synology or FreeNAS is gonna have, but it's gonna be decent. We'll just do trash can file versioning and we'll clean it out after 30 days. And under ignore patterns, you can say, I don't want any .txt files synced for whatever reason. And under advanced, you have additional things. And so if you have a huge file system that's got a lot of data and your sync thing is taking up a lot of your CPU, you might want to increase this full scan interval. This is how often sync thing goes through and relooks at all the files to make sure that nothing's changed. 3600 seconds is an hour, but people might even do this 24 hours. It depends on how often and how big your files are and how often you're going to need them changed. And so now we're just going to go ahead and click save. And so now let's go into our desktop and we're going to wait a minute. And right here, it says we want to share it folder test and we're going to say add. And this is where we get to say where to put it. I'm going to put it in my home folder and I'll call it sync slash test. And I can also choose a bunch of different things here, basically the same settings. And we're just going to go ahead and click save. All right. And so now let's go into my file system and see what it looks like. And so if I go into Finder, I can see this sync folder and this test folder. And so that means it's working. So let's go ahead and just drag an image to it. And so now it is on there. So let's go back and we're going to see this in action. We can do a, we can force a rescan really quickly. And so now it knows that there's additional files here. And so we can go up and we can see it's uploading. And now when we go back here, we'll see that there's three files here, which means it successfully worked. So now we have sync thing up and running though. We do need to note right now, it is not permanent. If we go back into terminal, we can see it's still just running based off of my one command. And so when we hit control C, or if we were to sign out of SSH, it would kill the program. So now what we need to do is we need to enable the sync thing service. So that's really easy to do. All we have to do is do a sudo system control, enable sync thing at pi dot service. That way it'll actually be run as pi. And so any folders that pi has access to, AKA our default user, sync thing will also have access to. And so now we'll do a pseudo reboot and we'll wait a minute. And so sync thing should start up on boot now. And so we'll go ahead and test that in a minute once it connects back up. And so I just went back into sync thing and refreshed the page a couple of times until it rebooted. And just like that, without us doing anything, sync thing just started up back on its own. And so now it's just going to be running. And now what we can also do is we can SSH back in and we'll make sure those files actually got there. I'll just clear it to give us some space. And now we'll do a LS and we can see that there's this test folder that was created and we CD into it. We'll see that there are these images that I transferred over earlier. I can even do an RM and now it's got a new change to it. And so we can go back in and we can see that now there are just two files in here. And so that's all there is to it. Sync thing is now running. It's got this interesting peer to peer network that just honestly works really well, especially if you have very little bandwidth because it is peer to peer. It's a lot faster than having one centralized server controlling all of this. And so if you've got a bunch of different friends who need to share files like this, it works a lot better than one person having to manage this whole bandwidth for everyone. 
All right, well, that's really all there is to it. Sync Things now going to be able to sync these folders just constantly, and you can just keep adding users. And the thing is, it's really built for security, and so that's really good, and it means you can trust it a lot better. All right, well, that's it for this tutorial. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.